thank you. Uh, I'm Pavel Žák, I'm from Czech Republic. Uh, I'm really great, I'm really pleasured that uh, I can be here today. Uh, this is actually my first time here at the DubDub and AltConf, so I'm very happy that uh, you uh, asked me for presentation. Uh, I'm from the company called Kiwi.com. Uh, Kiwi.com is an online travel agency. Uh, our main product is called Virtual Interlining. We are basically preparing uh, combined uh, itineraries from multiple carriers, not only flight carriers, but also bus transportations and trains. And we are basically trying to provide them as one product, uh, regardless the carriers they are based upon. Uh, in this talk, I will be covering our uh, journey uh, with AR toolkits and how we uh, somehow misuse them for slightly different task than they are originally proposed to. But first, uh, let me take you back a couple years uh, when I was uh, much younger, much more foolish, and trying to actually finish my PhD at the Faculty of Information Technology. I was part of the Department of Computer Science uh, and focusing on computer vision and multimedia. Uh, I was lucky to be involved in many interesting projects. One of my personal projects was uh, building a library for virtual controls, uh, like for creating up the camera-based user interfaces. This is the left image where user could see on web, web camera, for example, some virtual controls and uh, use them. Uh, also, one of the projects in our department was trying to reconstruct the shape of the meeting room, such as this one, uh, using uncalibrated video sequences. Uh, unfortunately, I was quite a lousy at the acad academic field, and when the iPhone showed up, I kind of fell in love in mobile development. I started an app development company, and I never thought at the time that these skills I got at the academic field I will use uh, sometime in the future. Meanwhile, my company joined Kiwi.com, as I mentioned. Uh, I started to focus more on travels, and also I was part of the metal band playing their bass, and we traveled a lot across the Europe. Uh, my colleagues in the band were uh, young students. We didn't have enough money, so we had to travel really cheap. Uh, it is quite uh, easy to travel cheap across Europe. There are with their Ryanair, these low-cost airlines, but if you are traveling with low-cost airline, it's easily to get messed up. If you basically don't follow some rule or you have oversized baggage, you are needed to pay quite high fees. This happened to us a lot, and since I was already a part of the Kiwi.com, I was thinking if we are able to fix this problem. Uh, because as we are providing also virtual interlining, the issues with having the right baggage size may be, uh, when combining, for example, two low-cost uh, carriers, uh, it may be much higher than when you are traveling only one way route, for example, with Vizair. So uh, the problem is that you have to have the right sized bag, and if you are not having that, you need to pay quite high fees for that. And two years ago, when the AR kit appeared, we were thinking if we are able to create some feature on our internal hackathon uh, that would fit our application. You know, uh, for AR kit there are lots of games uh, providing some virtual objects into the reality scanned through the phone, but what can be used in the travels? Of course, some indoor navigation, but you need some data, you need some beacons and other stuff and what else could be provided for travelers. And we wanted to cover some of the pains that we know that our users have. So the naive way of thinking was, hey, so let's move ahead before actually user needs to come to the uh, airport and put his bag into this measuring cage and then he seems that he's unable to fit his bag there. Uh, let's try to make this experience a bit more virtual. So our first solution was this nice 
virtual cage, which was presented somewhere in the space, and user could put it back into that and see if it fits. But if you are uh, familiar with AR solutions, uh, it's not so easy as it may seem. May I ask how many of you have experience with AR kit or AR core? Quite a lot of you, that's great. And you know that the closer you are to the object that you have uh, something to do with, the more difficult it is to actually to see what's going on. And when the user put the bag inside such a virtual cage, he had to scan the bag and try to see if it fits or not. And it's what's really difficult. So we are thinking, uh, are we able to somehow uh, make it more intelligent so it's not up to user to see if the back fits or not and position the back rightly there, but can we somehow uh, answer him the question, yeah, you are okay and you are not? So our first approach was based on these steps. Firstly, we provide the virtual cage somewhere uh, on the table or on the floor. Then the user needs to put the back into that and then we tried to get some features detected from the area and try to see if these features are within the volume uh, from the cage or not. So if there are some intersections. We were trying to detect these intersections and then visually mark that some of the sides of the virtual cage is actually colliding with the physical object. At this video, you can see the result of our first tries. So you can see there is a virtual cage. User puts back into that. And now as he starts to walk around, we are trying to mark him if he's okay with some collisions or not. When the sides are green, it's okay. When the sides turn red, there are some collisions. This worked somehow, but as you can see, the experience was still lousy. It was super difficult, and basically, it was still on user uh, behalf that uh, he had to provide, uh, put the bag on the right uh, space, and sometimes putting the bag into the space where or, uh, the cage already was, uh, it caused that the uh, floor detection failed, and the cage moved or slightly float a bit away, so it was like uh, some catch game where user had to put a uh, bag into the cage and the cage shifted a bit. So he readjusted the bag and so on and so on. So he said, hey, that's not good enough and this is not the feature that we would like to provide to our users. We implemented it on the first version of ARKit and also on Android using the first Tango phones. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> there were some issues uh, apart of that UX fail, as I said. And on the AR kit, the main issue was that actually the feature point extraction uh, wasn't performing well as we needed. There were a lot of uh, outliers, mainly upon the ray from the camera to the object. So the object from the point of view seems like some pointy hedgehog, uh, lots of outliers outside and also inside uh, the object, which makes it hard for us to actually measure it because we didn't know what uh, point is in layer and what is outlier. But it was a good start. The stability of camera localization on both Tango and AR kit was good. The floor detection worked perfectly. And we really appreciated the depth map that was produced by Tango phones. So we could produce, uh, for example, some depth rendering where the physical object could obstruct the virtual object and the result looked really realistic. But as I said, we weren't happy and we basically put this project aside. And a year passed. <clears throat> year after that, the Apple uh, announced ARKit 2, and also there was a, another AR toolkit uh, prepared by Google, and that is AR Core. And we said, hey, let's reiterate, let's try to make it once again, and probably a better. 
So in this case, we thought that we don't want the user put something uh, within the cage. It was a dead end. We wanted to provide to our user more Apple-ish experience. Basically, just point your phone at the back and we will say you if it's okay and if it's not. So we have prepared this algorithm that is basically sum up with this chart. So after the floor is detected, which is usually the main point of all AR applications, <coughs> We started to build a point cloud, which is the information of the volume and of the objects in the scene. And we try to measure the point cloud there and thus to get some bounding box that is telling us if the back is okay or is larger or smaller. And of, of course, we provide some feedback, visual feedback to the user. And we are iterating over that. Uh, I'm gonna break this approach into several steps and try to explain what's going on in each part. Uh, I would like to mention, feel free to ask question anytime when I'm not clear enough or you have some questions popped up in your head. We don't have to save it for the end of the presentation. So floor detection. Uh, as I said, floor detection is usually the first step in almost all AR applications. Uh, it is because we need to somehow match uh, our virtual space with the camera and de mobile device orientation and position. And it is usually being done by detecting some anchor within the scene. Uh, the floor detection is basically done by detecting horizontal planes. But the anchors could be also some images, uh, vertical planes, uh, some markers and other stuff, face, faces, for example. Uh, in the AR kit, detecting the floor is pretty easy. Uh, you just select into the configuration that you want to have the plane detection enabled. And in the callback, you are catching uh, new anchors that are added to the scene. And on these anchors, then you are able to position your virtual uh, objects and you are also able to get some information about the features there. Uh, at the AR core solution, this is pretty much the same. Also, there is some session that takes care of the camera ha uh, handling and extraction of, of the features, and you can call get all trackables and look for the planes. Uh, also, you have two options, the take horizontal planes or vertical planes. So it is not just floor detection, it's plane detection. So if you are on some larger table, you are able to work on that. I have here another video example, this time captured from AR Core, where you will see how these anchors and horizontal vertical planes are being captured during the time. Now you can, there is a red floor, uh, purple vertical planes, and once you have such planes, you are able to provide there some virtual objects like these small Android dolls. Yeah, that's it. As you can see, uh, the plane detection works really great for large plane like floor uh, walls, but it's not really possible to reconstruct, for example, the shape of the back that is presented there. So, uh, we need to look somewhere else. And this is the uh, feature points. Uh, AR toolkits are able to provide you with feature points detected within the scene. And you basically have this as the representation of the scene. It is not uh, the depth map. It is not so dense, but it is stable enough, so when you are, for example, moving around to the scene, you are able to say if one feature point that you observed in one time is the same that you observed uh, a couple of frames later. But the feature points are uh, not any indicators that they are part of any object. So you are basically unable to distinguish if some feature point 
uh, detected in the scene is part of the object that actually interests you, back in our example, or if it's some, I don't know, table, chair, dog, someone passing by, and etc. Uh, the feature points are basically points within the 3D space, so three coordinates. Uh, in the AR kit, you have the fourth attribute for each point, which is identifier. Uh, this identifier uh, reflects the feature point, uh, some visual uh, appearance there, and you are able to match the feature points between frames, uh, from frame to frame. Uh, on the AR core implementation, the fourth attribute is confidence. When AR core is not so confident about the feature point position, or actually if it is uh, like stable feature point, the confidence is lower. It is marked from zero to one. Uh, on both implementations, you are able to get these feature points from frame uh, properties. And what we discovered is that ARKit performs much better on lower distances. Uh, and AR core performs much better on longer distances. Uh, at the moment, as the dub-dub is going on, uh, if you see the news uh, that were told about new AR kit free, uh, I don't think that this is uh, valid anymore. I have seen some demos where the features were detected for really large uh, scenes and environments. <clears throat> the feature points are extracted for each frame. That means for each view of the camera into the scene. But to be able to actually say the volume of the back or something presented in the scene, it is not enough. You need to uh, add each detection from each frame and sum it up and build up something that is called point cloud. So that means that when you are walking around the back in the scene, for each frame you are taking some partial set of feature points and building up the point cloud of whole scene. Uh, we are using some close uh, and identifier features to actually merge some points together so they are not uh, growing very fast. And since there are a lot of feature points on the floor and also quite a lot of noise on the floor, we are ignoring uh, feature points within uh, five, 10 centimeters from the floor. So with this approach, as you can see on the illustrations for each detection, you have set of feature points and you build up nice point cloud for the back or objects that you are actually scanning. And now when you have the point cloud, you have all the information that you can have to be able to answer the question, is the volume of this point cloud uh, enough to fit into some dimensions? Uh, we are building a bounding box to answer that. And since in our use case, usually the traveling baggages uh, are rectangle-ish shape, uh, we are simplifying that into the 2D space. So all these feature points from the point cloud are projected onto the base plane, and we are computing uh, this bounding only in the 2D space. Uh, there is a numerous algorithm to actually compute the bounding box or bounding uh, area of any feature set or point set. Uh, we are using rotating calipers, which require to build a convex hull as the first step. Building a convex hull is quite an easy step. It's basically some sort of sorting algorithm. We are using quick hull uh, algorithm there. And once you have uh, constructed the convex hull, the other step is actually trying to fit a rectangle onto that and uh, measure the minimal bounding rectangle. This is being done by rotating caliper, caliper algorithm, 
which is a really simple solution. It, you can imagine it that you have the ruler and you are rotating the ruler among this uh, convex hull and you are trying to find the best setup where the volume is the lowest. lowest. As you can see, these algorithms are quite exact. If there would be any outlier there in our point cloud, it would mess up our result completely because any outlier, for example, 20 centimeters away from the back would mean that we would uh, take it as part of the back and the dimensions would be really large. Uh, luckily for us, the implementations provided by ARKit and ARCore are, are quite stable now and the outliers are not so, such an uh, issue as it used to be in the first implementations. But uh, it could be easily enhanced, for example, using some stochastic algorithms like RANSAC, when you could, say, uh, take only some subset of, of points of uh, the point cloud, and you would measure uh, the minimum bounding box with some confidence. Now when we have the bounding rectangle in 2D, we are again able to return to 3D space and taking some height of our point cloud. It's easy to take only the highest point, but again, if we want to make it much better, we can somehow approximate it or use some stochastic algorithm here. And once we have this bounding box, we are pretty done. So we have something that we can then represent back to the user and say, hey, this is what we have measured. Uh, this is uh, the dimensions of your baggage. To render the result to our user, ARKit ARCore again provides you with nice set of tools. Uh, in the scene view, basically you handle some tree-like hierarchy of objects and in our situation, you don't need some complex object, just one box with setup material. It's uh, nice that uh, in this material, you can set uh, a lot of uh, properties, not just the colors, but also some shading, and you can utilize also real world lightning, which is estimated by the AR toolkit, so it, the object looks that it fits the scene much better than if it were only like in plain rendering or some basic funk shading. Uh, in AR core, the situation is similar. There is scene form prepared for, again, this high level manipulation of the virtual objects. Uh, but in the time of our implementations, there were some issues with the frontal face cutting and uh, rendering of, of the box there. So our programmer used a much low, uh, low level approach and basically rendered everything in OpenGL ES2, which meant he had to prepare the right geometry, he had to prepare the right shader, fill the geometry and render it itself. So how does it look uh, in the result? This is short video, so I will comment a bit ahead. Uh, user puts his back on the floor and then he scans the floor and as he walks around the back, the feature point are detected and the point cloud is being constructed. Uh, you will see in this uh, demonstration that there will be a blue box and it will be growing and rotating, not really nicely, but it actually reflects how the point cloud grows over the time. And once we have enough points detected on our back, it will get stable and you will see the result. <clears throat> so the floor detection is pretty quick. Now the point clouds are being filled in and once there is enough point, you see that the pounding volume is pretty stable. And now user can see the result and we can display the dimensions of his baggage. Yes? About how many points was it 
uh, usually we are talking about 100 points, like in, in, in that order. Usually in each uh, detection, you have about tens of feature points, and it really depends how far you are, and also it depends on the environment, lightning, and also on the object itself, because the feature points are usually detected on the sites with really feature-rich uh, texture. So if you would have glass uh, only back or glass only um, object, you would get almost none feature points or you will get a lot of outliers because uh, you will get some feature points on some reflections on the, on the objects which won't be there if you move it. So this is really tricky. What we have seen is that uh, the lightning must be quite nice when there are some strong shadows. For example, when you are using this uh, outside in the strong sun or which is the, like I would say, the weakest, more, the weakest point of our implementation that on the airports, they are usually uh, the floors which are really shiny and uh, sometimes the floor detection completely fails there. But if you are okay with the floor detection, usually what we did uh, or what we see, saw, these bags, even though they are completely black, the algorithm is still able to gather enough points to actually measure them. Uh, as you can see here, uh, there are really about, I, I think it's 112 points in this video that were captured. Uh, you would be happy if you had four points uh, on the right edges, but uh, yeah, the more the better. Um, so I would like to sum it up somehow. Uh, first question you could have is, is this some unique approach? Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, Kayak uh, also has this sort of feature. They uh, released it two months ahead of us. But I think, and I still didn't uh, have uh, it like 100 completely confirmed, but I think that our implementation on Android phones is the only one. Uh, there are also some other competitors that have a similar feature, but it's not so sophisticated. EasyJet has basically the virtual cage, as I uh, showed, uh, in that, that was actually our initial solution. And KLM has something in between and no other solution yet. Uh, it's obvious that the AR kit is not like uh, prepared for such a sense understanding uh, algorithms, but it's much more and more uh, capable of doing such things every year. At the moment, in the, for example, an AR kit free, there is nice detection of the people occlusions, which again can uh, be pretty handy here. <coughs> we were also thinking to try to uh, solve the situations that we are unable to distinguish the back related feature points from other objects in the scene. So if you put the back really close to some furniture, uh, you will detect points also from this furniture and yeah, and it will fail again. Uh, one of the solution would be to try some CoreML uh, based object detection in the 3D space. So uh, if we would train some set of backs, maybe it could help us also to actually filter out some outliers here. Yes, question. How much air are you thinking the app will be in? How much air? Yeah, how far off? How far off are you? Is it working? How far off are you from the actual dimensions? Uh, like, uh, what's the precision? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we did some measurements. Usually, uh, we did set of uh, experiments with the different bags, also different objects like, sorry, uh, for example, with uh, some shoe bags uh, and boxes and other stuff. Um, when we approximated the result, usually the error is about one and a half centimeter in average. And we tend to say uh, the dimension is uh, bigger than actually the bag is. So. I would say that when, when the result is that, hey, your back fits, 
it's the user is pretty much safe and it really fits. But yeah, uh, if, if you are willing, uh, feel free to download QV.com app and try it for yourself. As you will see, sometimes it fails gracefully, sometimes it works gracefully. Uh, I, but I think that it's really interesting that from the current uh, AR toolkits, there are really nice features that can be actually used for much wider applications than just uh, providing some emojis within 3D space. <coughs> I don't know why. So I need to thank uh, my team here, uh, the iOS developer, uh, Dan Vibirao, uh, he prepared uh, the solution on iPhone, uh, Arkady Rubailo did the uh, implementation in AR core, and the UX concept was handled by our designer, Denis Rychik. If you are interested in more details, feel free to ask me or the guys, or go to our code.kiwi.com uh, blog, where there are two nice articles covering our initial implementation and also our current implementation. And also you can find their links to those guys who actually did the hard work and implemented what I wished for. <coughs> That's all from my side. I see I was pretty quick. So if you have any questions, fire away. Yes. How long, how long was this process from start to finish or? Uh, like our development process uh, or uh, uh, for the user to actually measure the back. The development process. Yeah, uh, in total it was two years, but with the long pauses. So we started when the first AR kit was implemented, and we dedicated like three, four weeks to that, uh, because uh, our guys used this to actually, uh, uh, or they participated on this project also at the university, so they actually did their master degrees on these uh, approaches. Uh, then we had a year pause. Once the AR kit 2 was uh, introduced, we again looked into that. And again, I would say four or five weeks uh, until we were able to get to some result. Yes. Uh, how did you determine which feature points belong to the bag? Uh, and uh, which uh, which were belonging to the floor, and how what was your approach on like uh, removing those that were outliers? Uh, I didn't hear it perfectly, but if I understood correctly, uh, how did we uh, handle the feature points that were below, like near the floor? On the back first, and then on the back. Yeah. Uh, we are actually ignoring them because the back needs to like have some structure that is uh, consistent so if you are even if you are uh, cutting off some feature points near the floor you still are able to compute the volume there even though there are no no uh, points the issue could like arrive here if there would be some extensions in the back within this area that we are actually ignoring but uh, i haven't seen any real object like that any questions? If not, thanks for your attention. I'm really glad I could be here and feel free to chat with me anytime.